Hello and welcome to the basic guide of the Atoto development team and all of the buildable cannons in this game. This video is going to be covering the following, the Atoto development team, the base health upgrade, every single cannon, and a general guide for each of the cannons. If you enjoy this video, why not give it a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content on this channel. Can we get 1100 likes on this video? I think we can do it, as if we reach this goal, it lets me know that this is the type of content you guys want. Anyways, let's talk Atoto Development Team. The Atoto Development Team, created by Gamatoto's brother, is the team that allows the player to upgrade their base with certain effects. There are seven different types of cannons you can unlock through the Atoto Development Team. These include the Slow Beam, Iron Wall, Thunderbolt, Water Blast, Holy Blast, Beaker Blast, and Curse Blast. I will be highlighting what each cannon does, what materials you need, my personal best stages for the materials, and the best situations for each cannon. Before I go on about the specific details about each of the cannons, I want to discuss some general aspects of the cat cannons. First, if you want to upgrade your cannons past level 10, you need to have both the cat cannon attack and cat cannon recharge at level 20 with 10 plus levels, or have them at level 30. Also, whenever you upgrade your base's HP, it adds 4000 health for a total of 120,000 extra base health at level 30. In order to max the base health out, you need 245 bricks, 182 feathers, 199 coal, 152 sprockets, 221 gold, 172 meteorites, 119 beast bones, and 52 ammonites. You also need 68 engineers and 384 hours to get it to level 30. Building materials can give you a maximum of 3 items on 1 crown stages, 4 on 2 crowns, and 5 on 3 or 4 crowns. With all of this out of the way, we can finally start our discussion about the cannons themselves, starting with the slow beam. The slow beam, judging by its name, applies a slow effect on every enemy onto the field, unless they're immune to slow. The base slow time for a level 1 cannon slows enemies for 1 second, or 30 frames. For every level added to the cannon, it adds 2 frames, or approximately 0.7 extra seconds of slow time. At level 20, the slow beam will slow enemies for 3.3 seconds, and at level 30, it will slow for a decently long 5 seconds. The slow beam is useful in stages that have a ton of fast moving enemies such as Houses of the Holy where the enemy speed can be overwhelming if you don't have enough crowd controllers for the Brawlos, Lil Bonbons, and Mr. Angels. Another situation where it can be useful is in situations where you want to halt the enemy's movement but not completely freeze them so you can still trigger their attack animations like in Floor 30. In order to get a level 30 slow beam, you're going to need 202 bricks, 156 feathers, 204 coal, 101 sprockets, 127 gold, 139 meteorites, 127 beast bones, and 42 ammonites. Every alternate cannon requires 72 engineers and 396 hours. I'm bringing this up here since this is the first alternate cannon type as well so I don't have to repeat myself. The Iron Wall spawns a cat wall that blocks all enemy attacks for a specific amount of hits and for a specific amount of time. Since the cat wall is regarded as an actual cat unit, you can't use the Iron Wall if you've reached the cat limit. The Iron Wall starts with 5 health and stays for 2 seconds, or 60 frames. Every level adds 3 to 5 extra frames, or 0.1 to 0.16 seconds on how long the wall stays. Every level also adds an extra hit to level 11, where it has 15 health. Afterwards, it only gains an extra hit at level 17, 24, and 30 for a maximum of 18 health. It has the metal ability, meaning it only loses 1 health per hit. It also lasts for 6 seconds at level 30. The iron wall can be pretty useful for halting enemy advances for a short while if your units get into a sticky situation. It is also useful for clumping enemies together to try attacking multiple enemies with a single unit. This strategy works especially well with LD attackers. This cannon synergizes extremely well with Melcat as both have the metal trait, meaning that stalling enemies is a bit easier if you use the iron wall to stall enemies while your metal cat recharges. In order to get a level 30 iron wall, you're gonna need 119 bricks, 116 feathers, 128 coal, 309 sprockets, 137 gold, 134 meteorites, 116 beast bones, and 39 ammonites.
The Thunderbolt Cannon shoots a lightning bolt that freezes enemies for a specific amount of time. The lightning bolt will land in front of your frontmost unit with a range of 1 to 500. When you first unlock it, it will freeze enemies for half a second. Leveling it up causes the cannon to freeze enemies for an extra frame or two. At level 20, the Thunderbolt Cannon will freeze all enemies it hits for 2 seconds, and at level 30, this becomes 3 seconds. The Thunderbolt Cannon is best used to halt an enemy with a very fast attack rate. For example, Professor A is an enemy that counters rushers like Awaken Bahamut and Power Cutter Cat. However, if you time a Thunderbolt against them properly by blocking one with a Row Cat, you can get a good hit or two with your rushers without having to worry about his slow preventing a Bahamut from landing an extra hit. You can also use the Thunderbolt Cannon to draw out the attack animation of a slow attacking enemy. Examples include Neandem, I Am Face, and Craze Titan. In order to get a level 30 Thunderbolt, you're gonna need 156 bricks, 120 feathers, 155 coal, 108 sprockets, 120 gold, 154 meteorites, 244 beast bones, and 41 ammonites. The Water Blast Cannon deals a specific amount of damage against metal enemies relative to their current HP. When the cannon is first built, it will deal 11% of a metal enemy's current health. At level 10, it will deal 20% of their health. At level 20, it will deal 35% of their health, and at level 30, it will deal 45% of the metal enemy's current health. Let's use a level 10 cannon and a 100% Super Metal Hippo to explain these numbers. A Super Metal Hippo has 8,000 health. Since it deals 20% of the current health of a metal enemy, it will deal 1,600 damage against the Super Metal Hippo. Now with our Super Metal Hippo at 6,400 health, we will apply the Water Blast again. Since the cannon does 20% of the current amount of health, it will only deal 1,280 damage against the Super Metal Hippo. This cannon is great for helping you out against metal enemies and should be used on any metal exclusive stage, but outside of damaging metal enemies, it will only deal a singular point of damage, meaning that this takes 80 Water Blasts to take out a 100% Doge. In order to get a level 30 Water Blast, you're gonna need 284 bricks, 154 feathers, 195 coal, 105 sprockets, 94 gold, 145 meteorites, 108 beast bones, and 10 ammonites. The Holy Blast, like the Water Blast, is meant to counter a specific trait. However, what makes the Holy Blast different from the Water Blast is that it deals a specific amount of health based on the enemy's maximum health instead of their current health. The Holy Blast also deals a lot more damage against burrowed zombies and freezes zombies for a specific amount of time. At level 1, it deals 0.5% of a zombie's health, 10% against a burrowed zombie's health, and freezes zombies for a second. At level 10, it deals 2.5% of a zombie's health, 15% against burrowed zombies, and freezes them for 1.5 seconds. At level 20, it deals 10% health against the zombie's HP, 30% against burrowed zombies, and freezes for 2 seconds. And lastly, at level 30, it deals 15% damage against zombies, 40% against burrowed zombies, and freezes for 2.5 seconds. It also has the zombie killer ability and targets the zombies corpses, so they will have a slightly lower amount of health when they come back to life if they weren't Z killed. Probably the longest time I'm going to be spending talking about a cannon's stats. Since this cannon is made to deal specifically with zombie enemies, this cannon is a great ally when doing zombie stages. Bosses like Dabu of the Dead, while being immune to the cannon's freeze, will still get damage from the cannon, allowing you to chip it down while your units deal with the units in front of it. It can also be used to delay attack animation since it gives them a slight knockback. Dabu, who has 3 million health, if he was hit with the Holy Blast at level 20, will deal 300,000 damage against them. In order to have a level 30 Holy Blast, you're gonna need 158 bricks, 121 feathers, 190 coal, 116 sprockets, 116 gold, 149 meteorites, 237 beast bones, and 11 ammonites. The Beaker Blast is a cannon that knocks back enemies, deals a percentage of the damage relative to the regular cat cannon, and destroys enemy barriers. The cannon also has a specific amount of range, and it targets the enemy closest to your base, including burrowed zombies and corpses. At level 1, the cannon has a range of 160 and deals 30% of the damage. 
At level 10, the cannon has a range of 200 and deals 50% of the damage. At level 20, it has a range of 320 and deals the same amount of damage that the regular cat cannon does. At level 30, the cannon has a range of 400 and deals 150% of what the regular cat cannon does. The Beaker Blast is a great cannon to have for the Cats of the Cosmos, as enemy barriers are plentiful, so having a guaranteed way to get rid of them can make your life a little bit easier. For example, in the Cats of the Cosmos Chapter 2 stage, Aguam, there is an Ultra Baba and you can only use special units. Since there are a total of 5 special barrier breakers, one being a collaboration unit, one being a late game unit, and another needing talents to acquire and isn't all that good anyways, that only leaves you with Loincloth Cat and Low Macho Legs. The Beaker Blast Cannon shines here as if you don't have either of these units or you get some seriously bad RNG, you can always just use the Beaker Blast to get rid of the Ultra Baba's barrier. Another situation where this cannon can be pretty useful is with powerful enemies that have a short range. One example that comes to mind is Borfim. Borfim has humongous pushing power if not stalled with crowd controllers. However, if you take a crowd controller such as Talented Sanzo and keep it slowed enough to where if they do push far enough into your units like your Sanzos or whatnot, you could just undo all of that progress with the Beaker Blast. In order to get a level 30 Beaker Blast, you're going to need 187 bricks, 163 feathers, 172 coal, 106 sprockets, 109 gold, 247 meteorites, 101 beast bones, and 13 ammonites. For our final cannon, we go back to something more simple with the Curse Blast. Judging by the name, this cannon curses enemies for a specific amount of time. Since Curse as an ability comes up rather late for most players, I will just describe what Curse does. Curse simply shuts down special abilities such as Freeze, Slow, and Weaken. At level 1, it applies Curse for 1.1 second. At level 10, it curses for 2 seconds. At level 20, it curses for 4 seconds. And finally, at level 30, it curses for 6 seconds. To be 100% honest, the Curse Cannon I feel only has one real use where it's genuinely good since it's usually outclassed by most of the other cannons. The use where it could be very good is on the stage Saintly Sister with Heavenly Herald Papu. The reason why this is the case is that she doesn't have high damage at all, but she has a pretty deadly 40% toxic damage. Her toxic damage plus her initial damage can take out a level 40 Awakened Bahama in 2 hits. However, if you use a Curse Blast against her, Bahama can deal a crap ton more damage against her. As if Bahama is hit while she is cursed, he can survive the second hit unless she enters her strengthened mode. Specifically, he can deal a good 200 to 300,000 or so more damage against her. Outside of this scenario, however, the Curse Blast is just outclassed by most other cannons by the nature of other cannons just having more utility. In order to get a level 30 Curse Blast, you're going to need 269 bricks, 112 feathers, 260 coal, 108 sprockets, 111 gold, 115 meteorites, 111 beast bones, and 12 ammonites. You know, these cannons sound great and all, but you might ask yourself, how do I even procure all of these materials in order to build up these cannons? Well, luckily for you, I got the answer for that. Across all the subchapters in the Stories of Legend and the Uncanny Legends, different materials have different drop rates. Now, if you remember what I said at the start of the video, the higher the crown difficulty, the more materials you get from clearing a stage. For every stage that we talk about, I'm going to show a loadout that I personally think is great for beating the stage. Don't worry, all of these loadouts will be no uber loadouts. Now, the best stage in general to get materials is Torture Room. Due to the nature of having to beat Torture Room very fast, players know that this stage will allow you to easily grind up a ton of materials within a short amount of time. However, it should be noted that there is a 0% chance for Meteorites and Ammonites. Speaking of Ammonites, the only way you can get them is by playing through the Uncanny Legends and beating some of the later Infernal Tower stages. The best stage to get bricks is High Allurian Mountain. The best stage to get feathers is at Twin Peaks. The best stage to get coal is at Last Gang. The best stage for gold is Surrealist Sins. The best stage for meteors is Offworld Weary. The best stage for beast bones is Paparazzi Paradise. And the best stage for ammonites is Proletarium Box. I just want to give my huge thanks for you sticking around to the end of this video. If you thought this video was a useful guide, why not hit that like button to help contribute to the 1.1k like goal. 
If you enjoy the content on this channel, why not hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Let me know in the comments down below if you thought this was useful or what is your favorite cannon to use. Anyways, with that out of the way, I hope you have a wonderful day.